you uh, for jazz radio, and I teach jazz history in this very room uh, at the University of the District of Columbia, and it's, it's my pleasure this evening to have Fred Irby III as our guest for our jazz forum, and uh, rather than do introductions, we're going to get right into it because the whole thing is going to be about uh, Fred's activity and his life story, and I guess we'll go back to the beginning, uh, Fred. Where, where'd you grow up, and how did you get started in music? What hooked you on, on, on music? Well, I, I was born in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, I, as a young man uh, in the segregated South, uh, we, didn't we didn't have the internet or TV, uh, all, those, all those things. Um, and the marching band used to always parade in front of our house every day. That's how they would practice marching parades mm -hmm. and things like that, because, you know, Mobile is a carnival town. They have Mardi Gras in Mobile. So we, everybody wanted to be in the band to, uh, to participate in that. And so I used to always see the band. And I was one of those your kids that was five or six years old. used to tag behind the band. Okay. <laughs> so I always wanted to, to, to do that. And so uh, by the time I got to be in the third grade, um, my father brought my older brother, who's three years older than me, brought him a drum. So. You know, you you always want to tag behind your big brother. Okay. So, and I got mad at my dad because he didn't buy me one, and so um, so I kept after him by buying me a drum, and he, you know, my my brother didn't want me in the band with him, you know. So what happened one time? My brother burst the head on his drum, and he had to go to the music store to get another head and have the music uh, sell them and put it on there and everything. So I asked him, could I tag along? And so uh, he said, yeah. So I went with him. And so when we got to the music store, I begged my father to get me a drum. And my brother like told him that they had too many drummers because everybody <laughs> wanted to play drums. Okay. So my father was, was going to buy me a drum. Mm -hmm. And my brother didn't want me to have it. So this salesman knows that a, a trumpet costs more than a drum. <laughs> so Boy. he asked him, uh, Boy. he just told my father, he said, you know, I think this boy would be a pretty good trumpet player, you know. Oh. So I got this trumpet and, and, I, and I just, my brother just hated it that I was going to be in the band with him and everything. So I was determined to show him that I was going to be a much better musician wow. than him. In fact, on the way home from the music store, he was crying in the car because he was so unhappy because he thought I was going to be tagging with him. And, and so anyway, I got the instrument and I, I just started playing like every day, all day. And I fell in love with it. Who was giving you lessons at that age? That well, was kind uh, well, of young to start on the trumpet. Yeah, uh, in the segregated South, you had one school in that neighborhood, right. one, uh, one through 12. And what happened at my school, uh, we had, uh, I lived right across the street from the school, so I started this in kindergarten going to this school. It was like K, K through six. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got in the fifth grade, it was K through nine. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I got in the ninth grade, it was nine through 12. <laughs> wow. So I went to the same school Jeez. for 12 years. And the band director there was a very good trumpet player, uh, and he uh, he started me off on trumpet, and so I, I didn't develop a lot of bad habits. So from fourth grade until I finished high school, uh, I had a really good trumpet teacher. Mm -hmm. and, and we we listened to any any trumpeters uh, like on records or on the radio or anything like that. I listened to Louis Armstrong. Okay. Uh, everybody wanted to play. You know, Mobile is about two hours from from New Orleans. Okay. So I listened to Louis Armstrong. Plus, we had like some really good musicians in Mobile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so uh, I listened to him, and uh, I know my brother uh, heard me playing like Louis Armstrong, playing marches. So one day he came home. He had this record of uh, Miles Davis around midnight. Uh -huh. So he said, "If you're gonna play that horn, I want you to sound like Miles." <laughs> 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 so anyway, I got the record. I started playing it, and so I was trying to, I, know, I didn't know anything about transcribing, you know, uh -huh. fourth, fifth grade, sure. so I would just try to play what I, I would hear wow. on the record. Mm. And so I would 
this, I learned this solo. I think it was uh, Bye Bye Blackbirds on, mm -hmm. on there. I, I learned yeah. that. And, mm -hmm. uh, and as I was listening to the record, you know, you would slow it down so you could really hear the notes and everything. And I noticed this tenor saxophone player on there. Like I, after a while, I said, "Man, this cat, whoever this is," and I said, "It's John Coltrane." Oh, Lord. So I told yeah. Willie Hill about him. Uh -huh. Willie Hill is like we were growing up together. We was practicing. I told Willie Hill about him, and and Willie said, "Oh yeah, I know John Coltrane." So anyway, I gravitated to a Coltrane, and I bought some of Coltrane's albums, and I heard Donald Byrd. Wow. <laughs> and so anyway, I was just mm -hmm. talking about Donald Byrd. I said, Mr. Trumpet Player, Donald Byrd, you know, I'm like sixth, seventh grade. Wow. And, and then another trumpet player told me about Clifford Brown. Because uh -huh. he used to play the Clifford with strings album when I used to go over his house, you know. So that's how I fell in love with those, those players. Wow, like that. that's incredible. So a after uh, your high school years, where did you go to college? I went to Grambling. Okay. Gremlin uh, State. You, it was Gremlin, Gremlin College at uh -huh. that time. And uh, those, I think those were the best years of my life. Uh, okay. I, uh -huh. I never played in a group like that before. Uh, all music majors, uh, very good musicians uh, of the highest order. Mm -hmm. Like I said, uh, you probably don't know Dr. Willie Hill, but he was, sure. uh, he was my classmate uh, throughout high school and college. Okay. And wow. we went to, in fact, he got me a scholarship to Gremlin. But he became the very first African American president of MNC, which is now the National Association for Music Education. Okay. Uh -huh. And so, uh, when I was a freshman, Willie was a junior, and we did the halftime show for the very first Super Bowl. Wow! Wow! That's the very so first Super Bowl, cool. and the, the two okay. defensive captains from both of those teams were from Grambling: uh, uh, Buck Buchanan. And Willie Davis. Mm -hmm. So Grammar was turning them out because you know uh, back then when I was in school, uh, LSU, Alabama, all those schools they didn't have any African American football players. So Eddie Robinson got all the cream of the crop, you know. So we had like every year would be like maybe two or three uh, football players that went in the first round at Grammar. Mm -hmm. So uh, what would you do after you graduated from Grambling? Uh, I moved to St. Louis. I took the first job that was offered to me. Uh -huh. You know, uh, the reason I did that because I, uh, my parents died when I was young. My, my mother died when I was 13. Ooh. My father yeah. died when I was 15. So I stayed with cousins. Uh -huh. So I didn't want to be a, a burden on them. So I sure. just said, I graduated in, in December. So I just said, I'm going to take the first job that was offered to me. And uh, I got offered to teach school in St. Louis. Uh-huh. So I moved to St. Louis. First time I had been, ever been around snow. Oh, so I arrived St. in St. Louis in January. <laughs> I had some little jacket on. I almost yeah. froze to death. You know, I, I didn't have a place to stay. I stayed in the YMCA for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then I finally got a, 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 an apartment somewhere. And uh, I didn't have any money at all, you know. So I was just borrowing money from different people. Uh, and I taught in, in public schools for three, and a half, three years and a half years. And while I was in St. Louis, I, uh, I played the George Hudson big band. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know their name. Uh -huh. Well, he, you, you remember the Jeter Piddles sure. Orchestra? Yeah. Well, those players in that yeah. orchestra gravitated toward George Hudson when they, when they, uh, when they broke up. Uh, that band uh, was Oliver Lake, uh, wow. J.D. Perrin, okay. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Hammy Blewett. Mm -hmm. all those, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then one boy had played with Duke, a drummer. We used to call him Chick Booth. I don't even know his real name. But he had played with Duke. But George Hudson's band was like a feeding ground for Basie. Uh -huh. It was all those players, like Ernie Wilkins was in okay. George back in the day. Uh -huh. Alvin Nelson. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let me see who else was in there. Hmm. I can't remember. That's too, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So what'd you do after uh, you decided to move on from, from, the, from the teaching school? Well, I I, uh, I I was teaching school in St. Louis, and I was playing uh, in this orchestra there, uh, St. Louis Municipal Orchestra. Mm -hmm. It's an outdoor theater. Uh, it holds about 13,000 people. And they have a, a sister theater in Kansas City called the Starlight Theater. And show, they still have shows at both of those theaters. They do, they, they're just for one week. 
So it's, they have, I think they have a 13-week season. So every week you plan a different show. You have no nights off because your night off, you're rehearsing for the next show. Right. You know, so uh, I got a lot of experience. Uh, Absolutely, teaching and working at night. Yeah. And then I got married, and uh, after I got married, I was offered a job at Howard. Oh, okay. And so uh, I took the job, and I came to, to D.C., and um, I started playing um, in the theaters and playing around town. Was, was there any overlap uh, with Donald Byrd at Howard when you came in? Or? I think he left in 72. Okay, so he, he was gone before you got there, or, or yeah. as you were getting there. Yeah, he left in 72. I think he left in 72. I got there in 74. He was gone, like, I think two or three years okay. before I got there, you know. Yeah. And so I, I was at Howard uh, maybe about four or five years before I even met him. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. We knew, I mean, he knew about me because sure. the band was recording sure. And, sure. and I knew about him. And one day I was just in the office not doing anything and he he shows up, knocks on my door. I said, come in. Oh, wow. And his wife at the time said, uh, Donald Byrd would like to speak with you. <laughs> wow. I opened the door and went out there and oh. I had him come in. And, uh, right. you know, Donald Byrd did, uh, he did this record with voices. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Duke Pearson arranged it. Absolutely. Uh, along and Love for My Mother. You know that Crystal term? Redentor or something? Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Yes. And, but anyway, my, when my mother passed away, uh, I used yeah. to play that record all the time. Wow, That's the name sure. of the tune. It was, I mean, I, mean, I cried. And, wow, I, and I told him about that. And he, he was real touched when wow. I told him that I, I about this record I, I, that he did and I, how much I loved it and everything. So he he would always call me up and mm -hmm. and talk to me and and uh, tell me different things and uh, and I would sit and listen, you know. And uh, he was real smart too. Uh, he uh, he was a pilot. He was a lawyer. Yes. Uh, he was an art cool. collector. Mm -hmm. um, and well, a lot of people don't know that he made trumpets too. I didn't know that. Yeah, I knew about him getting the law degree to make sure. Yeah, get down to the business of of, of, of music that right. was really important to him. He made trumpets, and um, he had this trumpet that he made called the Blackbird trumpets. Mm. And what he wanted to do, I'm sitting there like in awe. What he wanted to do was, uh, he told me that um, in the, in every major city. The school system is predominantly African American. Like DC school system, most of the students are African American. Um, Chicago, Detroit, St. Louis, Philadelphia, Boston, mm -hmm. LA. So it's, yeah. you know, so what we wanted to do, he wanted to get together with those supervisors and he wanted to make these trumpets for these kids to buy. So he developed a prototype and uh, he had this fellow named Dick Ackright in California who uh, made Doc Severinsen trumpets. Hmm. So he designed a trumpet and he had 10 of them. So he played on all 10 and he only kept six. He kept one, he gave Darren Barrett, uh, the trumpet player won the Monk competition. Sure. Darren Barrett got one, Clark Terry got one, Wallace Roney, Roy Hergoro, and Jimmy Owens. So, he came out my office one day and he asked me to play his horn. And I played it and I, I, I just thought it was, it was amazing. It was just wow. really great. I mean, intonation uh, was, was perfect. Uh, uh, just um, felt good. The design of it was mm -hmm. like really amazing mm -hmm. because not, not, this is like about 25 years ago. So you see a lot of the new trumpets now, they, they're following the same design patterns that he had, you know. Um, so anyway, I told him, I, I asked him how much would it cost for me to get one. He told me he didn't have any more. So uh, I was really <laughs> sad, you know. Wow. So what he did, I found out, uh, he went and told Jimmy Owens that he needed the horn back because he had some, there was some flaws in it. Oh. <laughs> and Jimmy gave him the horn back and then he gave it to me. Unbelievable! Wow, this That's is it right awesome. here. That's awesome! Oh, great! Let's let's see it. Yeah. Fantastic! Wow! This is it. Boy, you can see a blackbird really trumpet. Oh, absolutely, boy! That's yeah. really phenomenal. Yeah. Boy, that that's 
<laughs> so special. Yeah. And he, he, has a, he has a cornet, too, the yeah. trumpet and the cornet. And so yeah. I, was, uh, I did this uh, several years ago. They had the Sondheim Festival at the Kennedy uh -huh. Center. And I, I did this musical called Passion. And had a bunch of cornets. Uh, it was like signal calls. Wow. And I played it one day. And uh, the orchestrator, uh, Jonathan Tunick, was just so, as soon as I played, we had the first break. He walked over and said, what is that you got there? I say, um, I say, you like? He said, yes, I really do. And so I told him Donald Byrd made it, and he wasn't surprised because well, he knew Donald. Sure. Well, yeah. Well, I'm gonna backtrack just a bit because you are in St. Louis, and you get called to come to Howard. <laughs> what was that connection like? You must have been doing something very prominent there to for them to find you there, or what was that process like to to get you to Howard? Well, this is what happened. Um, I went from an elementary music teacher that had never conducted a band to a university. Uh -huh. <laughs> so so yeah. I'm just, well, how do you do that? Well, uh, when, when, I was at, when I was a student at uh, Gramlin, I was the arranger for the marching band. I used to do all the arrangements and everything. In fact, they, they did an album uh, the year after I graduated. They got three of my charts on the record. So I used to write a lot. I hated it because we didn't have computers. So I had to like write all the parts out, sure. you know, it was like well. really, you know. So anyway, uh, they wanted me to work with this, this high school there to the marching and writing and stuff like that. So I was, a, I was eager to do that. So this principal uh, at this school noticed me. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we just became, you know, uh, you know Kent Miller? Mm -hmm. It's Kent sure. Miller's father. Okay. Right, he was wow. the principal at this school. Wow. You know Kent Miller, don't you? Bass player. Ooh. So anyway, uh, yeah. he knew who I was. I didn't know who he was. Wow. So his wife had a sister who was married to the department of music chairman. Uh, he had just gotten hired. Okay. So he told this man that, uh, he t they were talking, he said, you know, I need, I need to do something about the, the instrumental music program at Howard. I, he just got hired as chairman. He said, man, they got this young kid over there from Gramlin. Uh, I think you'll like him, you know. So he, he just took his word. So he called me up and just, oh, wow. uh, he called me up and offered me a job. Wow. And I turned him down. Because <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't paying enough money. Okay. <laughs> so I just, you know, and so I, anyway, I, when I turned it down, I told some people back in St. Louis I had turned it down this job from Howard. He said, you did what? Yeah. <laughs> so you turned down the job to go to Howard. Yeah, okay. I said, well, man, I, you know, I just got married and, you know, I, yeah. you know, I you know, care about going to Howard, you know. So he called me back two weeks later uh -huh. and I accepted it and Good. I came okay. here. Okay. You know, right. Fantastic. That's and I wasn't doing. hired as a trumpet teacher or the jazz band director. I was hired to, uh, to, to conduct, to create a concert band okay. and organize the instrumental music courses uh, at Howard University. Okay. And what happened is that uh, the, uh, when I got hired, there was no, they didn't interview nobody else other than me. So a lot of people on the faculty didn't think that was fair. So the, uh, the chairman, uh, when I showed up, he said, like, I want you to give a recital uh, in a month. And so I just gave him my graduate recital. Uh -huh. So I had my, my, my repertoire and everything together. So I did that, and um, and then he heard me play, and then uh, next thing I know, he got rid of the trumpet teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. he got rid of the trumpet teacher. He said, "You teach the oh, trumpet from gosh. now." And wow. I think we had some, we had some uh, the fellow who had the jazz band. In fact, we got there at the same time, and the students, uh, there was a mutiny. The students didn't want to play for him. And so uh, the chairman didn't, he said, I don't know what to do, you know. I said, well, I don't know, you know, I said, I, I never conducted a jazz band before, you know. He said, you got to take that. I said, well, I, I can't do, teach trumpet and do the concert band and, and the jazz band too. I said, and I was trying to play, you know, uh -huh, I was trying to play sure. in our town. Yeah. He said, well, you got to do it, you know, that I, I, I have no choice. So, uh, and then he said, uh, you, you, yeah, also what you need to do is that you got to go out and find me somebody to run this jazz program. Mm -hmm. I said, well, man, I ain't, that, 
I wanted in the cars when I got hired. Right. 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 That's where that bait and switch. Uh, <laughs> you know. So anyway, uh, Howard. yeah. So anyway, I I, yeah. I took over the band, uh -huh. and so the, the next year, uh, I think I uh, the next year we recorded our first album, uh -huh. with Jerry Allen, and and uh, and it was so successful. Everybody liked it. To the president, told him that he wanted me to keep that, you know, and so, um, so I still had to find somebody f to run the jazz program. That's how I recommended Dr. Dawkins. So you, 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 you've got my question here of asking about about the faculty, and, right? And, 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 right. And, and uh, uh, so, <laughs> how, how did how did you all hook up with our Dawkins, getting him in? Well, in I'm, you know what? This this is a true story. I drove from uh, St. Louis here in a U-Haul truck. And I got to St. Louis, I got to town about four in the morning. And I had a meeting with the chairman at nine on campus. I was living in PG somewhere I was with a friend of mine. So anyway, I, he drove me to the campus. I got to the campus at nine and I was so tired and I met him. He hadn't, he hadn't even interviewed me. He didn't know what I looked like or nothing. And we, when I walked out of there, he told me that my first semester, he didn't want me to teach no classes. He need to just, just walk around and see what we need. So first thing I told him, I said, well, you need to burn this building down. <laughs> 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 we need a new building, you know. Wow. He said, we weren't gonna do that. So I walked out of this meeting with him, and this fellow named Robert Gill, uh, he has a brother, what's his brother's name? Richard, well, Robert was the band director at Cardoza. Uh -huh. And we started talking, and so I started asking him about, uh, did he know any musician who worked around town? He said, yeah, Calvin, Calvin plays all the shows and everything. I said, he said, you know, I teach over there with Calvin. He said, you want to meet him? I said, yeah, yeah. So within, within five hours of being in D.C., mm -hmm. I was sitting at Calvin Jones' desk wow. talking to him. Mm -hmm. And so we talked and everything, and, and so Calvin, hooked me up with some gigs, and uh, Dr. Dawkins, uh, he hooked me up with some gigs too. They told okay. everybody about me, and so that's how mm -hmm. I started working in town. Mm -hmm. thing. So me and Calvin became really good friends. Uh, this was way before he came, came to UDC. Uh, uh, we had, I had a big band called Swing Works, and uh, Calvin wrote all the charts for that band and everything. And he's, he gave me a lot of guidance about who to call in town, and what to do and what not to do and everything. We always went out to dinner together between shows. We played a bunch of shows at the National Theater, Pearly, uh, Guys and Dolls. Uh, we worked together a lot of Shady Grove. That, that mm -hmm. place burned down, I think, uh, in uh, Gatesburg. So we, were, uh, we got to know each other really well. Another person I wanted to ask you with, uh, who, who suddenly you know, passed away, but I'd always see him at, at any of the events that you had at Howard, was Dr. Robert Stone. Mm -hmm. Tell us about him. Uh, you know, I was, I was like, I was, I think I, I was 26 when I was at, got to Howard. Uh -huh. And I was very fortunate to be uh, mentored by some seasoned musicians. Like uh, Dr. Dawkins was a band director at T.C. Williams. Uh, he was a principal also. And he was working at UDC when I, when I first met him. Uh, Bobby Felder, who had been a band director. I'm a young man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and Reverend Stone was a band director at uh, Delaware State. And uh, he taught in, in the public schools in Baltimore. And uh, uh, I was just fortunate to be in the presence of him and Bobby Felder, John Malachi, mm -hmm. and people like that. And I would always go to them for advice. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, John Malachi is another name that, that, uh, that, that came up in, in my thinking about questions to ask. In fact, the student you just mentioned, Jerry Allen, wrote a piece for John Malachi. Right. How, how did you get uh, John to, to, to teach over, over at Howard? Well, I didn't get him to teach. Uh, I think Dr. Dawkins got okay. him there, yeah. but okay. I, I was I was on a committee that voted right. for him. Okay. You know, he uh, was a great teacher. I mean, you know, uh, they the, some of the faculty members fought. They didn't want him there, and, wow. and I was just sitting back, like thinking. I mean, you know, we don't have a jazz piano teacher. Yeah. 
Mm. And so we got a chance to hire somebody who played with Charlie Parker. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> who, 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 yeah. you know, and these people don't know anything about jazz at all. Oh uh, but but uh, he wrote uh, he, he wrote a tune for, uh, he did an arrangement of uh, Round Midnight when, uh-huh. when uh, Monk died. Uh-huh. And also he, he wrote a tune for me, uh, I Want to Talk About You. Yeah. I boy, played it, uh, the trumpet man. solo. He, he, yeah. I haven't recorded it yet, but, uh, uh, and he also, uh, Back in 1984, the Jazz Ensemble went on a State Department tour for four weeks, October 84, and my regular piano player, Michael Bearden, couldn't go. And so John Malachi went with us. So we went to five or six different countries. And everybody knew him, you know. John's on the cover of our our book, PC Jazz. And and it's really special to me, because John was my wife's father's best friend from pre-World War II, mm-hmm. and, and he would come over and, and, and uh, my, my uh, Tom Barrett and John Malachi would be work on things on the piano after a party or whatever, and I'd be the fly on the wall. And John would tell stories about uh, Billy Eckstein's band and the, the antics that, that, that Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie would get into that right. I, couldn't, I couldn't ask him about those stories on the air when I interviewed him. But right. uh, it was really, really a special relationship. Yeah, he, he wrote a tune called Your Majesty. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Paul Carr recorded that with us okay, when he when he was right. there, and also, what else he did? Opus X. Uh huh. That was his thing with with uh, uh, with the, the, the Bill X time band. Yeah, I have that record. In fact, he yeah. he gave me that record about a month before he died wow. just to listen to it. Wow. And then yeah. he passed away, and I didn't. I just kept it. <laughs> so yeah, I, no. that's a classic that's album a too. Special, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And on that record is Fats Navarro, Art Blakey. I think. Dexter might have been on there. Yeah. Uh, yeah but, Dexter, but all the cats played in that oh, band. Oh, Dexter, Gene Amos, uh, you know, De- De- Gene Amos, Dexter Gordon, Dizzy yeah. Gillespie, they're all on that Opus X. Yeah. So you call him DM? Yeah. Uh-huh. What do you call him? D- no, D- no uh, 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 Dexter Gordon and Gene Amos. Oh, Joe, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. We're, right. we're all on that. It's right. an incredible band. And oh, yeah. John, John being a part of it. Oh yeah, and the stories uh, that he would yeah. tell. Well, know? he told me a lot of stories on this trip too. You know, yeah, sure. you know, David Yarbrough wrote a tune for him uh, uh-huh. right when he passed. It's called J.M. Right. That was the name of. Wow. We, we recorded that too. Wow, uh, Keter Betts also did, did some courses at. at yeah, he taught bass. Okay. Taught jazz bass. Yeah. At how you know? Yeah, you know, it's um, an issue. You know, like like I, I, I think there was a long time when when the real experienced musicians could could get academic positions to teach at universities. Now it's more of a credentialing process involved. That, uh, I, I was wondering if, if, if a Keter Betts, who didn't have a, a college degree, could, it was one of the best teachers I've ever encountered in life in terms of the, the range that, that he would teach about, whether you could hire a Keter Betts today. Yeah, we could. You know, we, we hired Charles Covington. He okay. doesn't have a degree. Right, we hired right. him. Uh, that's not, you know, you ain't, I mean, Howard is guilty of a lot of stuff, but these white institutions, they should be hanged. Yeah. Because Charlie Young told me when he was in college at North Texas State, Red Garland was living right there in Dallas. No, yes. <laughs> Red Garland. Right, right. And they right. never had him up there right, to do right. anything. Right, right. Now that's, 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 I mean, that's, uh, they should be hanged Absolutely. for that. Absolutely, no, no, I, you're right, you're right. <laughs> yeah. There were, uh, some of the early students, I, I, like I, I interviewed Noble Jolly uh, on my show as he was getting ready to graduate, and I understand he may have been the first jazz major yeah. at, the, at the university. Who were some of the other students, with Jerry he, Allen? I, he wasn't the first really? jazz major, he was oh. the very first to graduate. Oh, okay. You know, we, okay. we had, Don had some, some students who were in the jazz program, but they didn't know, they never graduated. Some uh-huh. of them did come back okay. and graduate. Uh, Kevin Tony came back and okay. graduated, and also uh, Keith Killer came back and graduated. Oh, okay. But so they, they when they formed the Blackbirds. It was well <laughs> huh? when they when they when 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 Donald had them in the Blackbirds. It was well time to move on. <laughs> well, yeah, well, they, I, I guess you know they. Um, I, yeah. I mean, the thinking at that time that um, most of those. And these, these cats were like musicians of the highest order. Absolutely. Uh, Keith and Kevin yeah. and, 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 I mean, 
uh, Bonnie Perry wrote this tune, Walking in Rhythm. So right, sure. they, they didn't really go to college to, to get no degree. Right, right. They went to college just to make connections and sure. learn from okay, other musicians. Yeah, yeah. So they, when some finally came their way, they were gone because they, they didn't want to be sitting up there playing with students who couldn't play. They were wasting their time, you uh -huh, know. So uh -huh. uh, uh, Wallace Roney left. He left. The, yeah, I was going to ask you he, that. You jumped into that question. Now. Yeah, right, he, right. He, was, he was there. And yeah. He got a call from Art Blakey. Right, <laughs> so he okay. going to stay there and start with Fred Irving uh, wow. or, go, or go play with Art Blakey. Wow. You know? Well, Jerry Allen uh, not only stayed, I was at her senior recital. And that was. That oh, was you taped good. it? Uh, no, I was there. Though. Yeah, 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 yeah. It. No, it was just incredible in terms of what she did for her recital. I mean, that was the talent that was on that stage that night. It was Roy Brooks. Right, right. Did he play that song? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Roy Brooks, uh, yeah. uh, Marcus Belgrave. Marcus Belgrave. Right. And uh, right. Wallace. Right. Jeez, uh, boy. Uh, Greg Osby. Boy. Uh, mm -hmm. Gary Thomas. Mm -hmm. Cal DeShield. Clarence boy. C. Wow. All of us on that stage that night. Wow. And I'm yes. sitting around looking like. Boy, this is your, <laughs> this is your school. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm going to tell you another story yeah, about, about Calvin Jones. Yeah. Um, when I first got to Howard, when I took over the band, uh, the, uh, the, the, I told the chairman, I said, look, I, I need to get some talent, man. He, so the choir was getting ready to go to, uh, to Detroit to perform, and I had the brass ensemble. So they were going to take the brass ensemble to perform with the choir, Dr. Norris. And so while I was there, I said, I'm going to stay a couple extra days and go and recruit. So my uncle lived there, so I stayed with him, you know, my uh, mother's brother. And before I left, I went and came to Calvin. I said, Calvin, uh, you know anybody in Detroit I can call to recruit some students? He said, let me give you Marcus Belgrade's phone number. Mm. So I had heard about Marcus from, you know, uh, the Ray Charles band. Sure. He was in there, you know. Yeah. Everybody knew about how great he was. So I got his number and I called him up. And Mark was playing at this club. So I went to the club to see him and we talked. And I said, and he told me he was teaching at Cass Tech. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I said, look, man, I need to get some kids from Cass Tech. So I went over there. He took me over there the next day. And that's how I met Jerry Allen. In fact, I got uh, another piano. Uh, two piano players and a bass player from Cass Tech. Mm. Jerry was one of the piano players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jerry was, was just, just phenomenal. In fact, the, the last time I, I spoke to her was when she played at, at Howard University at, at, at Crampton Auditorium. I don't remember all the details, but I did have a chance to go back and have mm. a conversation with her, you know, about the catching up, you know, going back to that recital and stuff right. like that. It was, it was just phenomenal. Who are some of the other students that came through the program that, that you, you really look out and say, hey, I'm glad you got out there? Um, it's been a lot, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I'm probably going to leave out a lot of names. It's on our website. Uh, yeah, it's I, okay. Yeah. Just throw, throw but, uh, a few out there. Uh, yeah. Michael Bearden. Yeah, okay. He's like, uh, he's the music director for Lady Gaga, but uh -huh. he was also the music director for Michael Jackson. Wow. In fact, he was with Michael Jackson the day he died. Oh, gee. Um, yeah. He was also with uh, Whitney, Whitney, no, Whitney. not Whitney, but Madonna. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. that was a, I mean. Okay. I asked him where he lived in L.A. He said, I live in a Madonna house. <laughs> 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 he had enough money to pay cash oh, for wow. that. Oh, wow. He's also, okay. the, the four times I did the Oscars, wow. he, was the, uh, he was a keyboard player in the okay. in, in Oxford. Okay. We had uh, uh, Wayne Lindsay. Uh -huh. You don't know you know that name. Yeah. Uh, Cal DeShield. Sure. Uh, Eric Wheeler. Wow. Wow. Um, Gary Thomas comes through. Yeah, he, yeah. He only did a year. Oh, okay. He okay. did a year. Then he went into the Navy. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Bill Murray. I don't uh -huh. know if you know that name, but he yeah. uh, he he was he was in my, he was in at my first band, and he was. Uh, he went on to the Air Force, and he was like the music director of the Air Force Falconeers at the oh, Air Force wow, Academy. Okay, sure. Him, um, yeah. Paul Carr, okay. Kevin Levi. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Boy. Uh, it's, it's been, uh, and, 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 uh, Brent Burkhead, you know well, Brent sure, Burkhead? yeah, absolutely. Brent Burkhead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, what I, what, I, what I always say is that I had waves. Uh -huh. I had the first wave, the second <laughs> wave. <laughs> The third wave, wave okay. the fourth wave, right, right. and the fifth wave. This is the fifth wave here. Okay. And I got now. Okay. So, uh, and uh, all those waves, I had really good players. Uh, 
uh, that can really play. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the, the first recording was when Jerry Allen uh, was, uh, was in, in the band. And so what was it that really compelled you to, to do a recording of the ensemble? How did that, that happen? What was the circumstances behind that? Well, my, my, uh, my, f my second year at Howard, um, I went to this uh, convention, MNC convention. I think it was in Baltimore. And so I went around to the, all the booths. Uh -huh. And one of the booths had a uh, was was maintained by Friendship Ambassadors. Okay, this was a, a organization that was trying to strengthen the friendship between the communist countries and the Western countries. Uh huh. And so this lady uh, was there. She 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 said it'd be nice to have your group uh, come to Howard. You know, I mean go go to Romania. And so I you know I never take no group out of the country. You know I just you know. So she said, let me come down there and talk to your vice president. Wow. So I said, okay. So anyway, I set up the meeting, and she went in there and talked them into uh, paying for us to go to Romania. Okay. I, I couldn't believe it. Wow. So I'd never taken a group out of, out of the city, let's alone right. out of the country, right. you know. Right. So I had to get passports. We had to get shots. Wow. We were going to a communist country, too, Ooh. you know. <laughs> and so while we were there, mm. uh, several of the musicians, uh, McNeil Anderson and Jerry, uh, they, we was just talking one night. They said, "Let's let's do a record when we get back." Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't know nobody doing no record, you know. Mm. And they said, "We'll we'll we'll organize it." So they came mm. with a plan. Uh, we were gonna play the tunes we were we were already playing, uh, and then uh, they they raised the money to uh, go in the studio and record, uh, and they 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 got a student in the art department to do the artwork mm -hmm. and everything, mm -hmm. and that was before we had computers. So the artwork was like, everything was manual, you know. Mm. So we did that, and, and so we passed around to all the different administrators on campus, and so everybody was like really digging it. They was playing on PFW, wow. mm -hmm. and so, uh, mm -hmm. so I just forgot about it. So word got back to me through the president that he said, Dr. Cheek, he said, I want you all to record every year. Wow. So okay. I said, what? <laughs> I think I want to do this every Because <laughs> I had to raise the money. Oh. And he said, I'm going to pay for it. Okay. So we just started recording, you know. And wow. so um, that, was, that was the first year was 76. And then we did wow. 77. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then we did uh, 78. And in 78, I was, I was kind of getting a grip on things. I said, say, well, you know, we need to stop doing these stock arrangements we need to like i think i did it the second year so we need to do some original material mm -hmm. so we did uh the second album uh jerry allen sung on the second wow. album uh -huh. she sang a tune she, she wrote and then the third year we we had some really good tunes on that one and then the fourth year during jerry's senior year everybody jerry was like really inspiring everybody good. so yeah. everybody was bringing in charts everybody's bringing in charts and so the fourth album we did was all original student composition, and that's the best record mm -hmm. we've done. Because mm -hmm. we had, I mean, we had Wallace and Clarence mm -hmm. C and Cla Carol DeShield and Gary Thomas, Greg Osby, wow. Warren Shad was playing drums on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we was on fire, you know. And so, I, I brought this. Uh, I, I brought this to give to uh, to give to Judy. I had a, a couple copies left, but this is this is the best album we've done. Like forty-five albums. Wow. This is awesome. This yes. is the best one. And it got pictures of Jerry and uh -huh. and all. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right, there we go. Boy. Now, right, right. <laughs> wow, boy. That's, uh, boy, 79. Now, that's, that's, that's the best. You can open it up, you know. Uh, but that's the best album that we've uh, recorded. But it's not the best song that we recorded. The best song we, I got this. You, I think you might have this. This is this is uh, after 9/11. Uh, we commissioned Frederick Tillis uh -huh. to write a tune. You you heard it right, and and it, this really is uh, is the expanded instrumentation, in addition to the standard uh, four trumpets, four trombones, five saxes, piano, bass, drums, and guitar. We added uh, French horn, tuba. And three different percussionists. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, and and narrator. 
Wow. Al Freeman is narrating on it. So uh, it's really, it was, it was, took us about, it took us about th three sessions to do that record and everything. Uh, who, uh, yeah, we did it. We did it. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, you, ha you have this record. Well, you have this, don't you? Yes. Okay. I, I have quite a collection of, okay. uh, of from going yes. back. Yeah, you can have that one too. Yeah. And, uh, well, th that one features Afro Blue. Uh, that, that was their first, right. that, that was the first uh, record they did. But b before we get to Afro Blue, okay. uh, uh, yeah. we, uh, right after 9-11, uh, everybody was like uh, really mad at the Muslims. And it was like a way all over the country, people was just talking about these Muslims, mm -hmm, just, just mm -hmm. they blame all on, blame Muslim, Muslim for everything. So I wanted to like do something at Howard to, to let people know that all Muslims are not like that. And so I invited Youssef Latif oh, right, right. to campus. And, and, and he wrote a tune too, uh, that features Saiz Kamala you know, on wow. harmonica. Wow. And we, uh, he, uh, that tune is called Syllogism. It's on there uh, that Youssef Latif wrote for us. And he played, he played in the concert with us too. And so when I picked him up at the airport, he wanted to know where, where he was going to be staying. So I, t I told him I was going to have him stay downtown, you know. He said he didn't want to stay downtown. Mm -hmm. He wanted to stay out in Silver Spring. Mm -hmm. And in the hotel, he was going to stay. I said, that's, that's no problem. I'll take you there. So anyway, when I took, I picked him up, I took him to the hotel, and he said, uh, uh, Brother Irby, uh, where are you going now? I said, well, I'm, I plan on going home. He said, but can you drop me off at the mosque? I said, yeah, no problem. Where is it? He told me where it was. It was half a block from my house. Wow, okay. <laughs> it was a half wow. a block from my house. So mm -hmm. I dropped him off at the mosque up on, uh, on half a block. And I said, uh, I said, when you want me to come back and get you? He said, whenever you want to. Mm -hmm. You know? So I, mm -hmm. I went back. I said, I got to play tonight. He said, just come back when you, when you finish playing. So mm. I finished at the Kennedy Center around, around 10.30, so I went by. Mm. It's right up the street from my house. I mean, wow. literally, Jeez, from here to boy. my park, where, where my car's parked. Wow. So I took him there, and, and I went and picked him up, and so he was praying. Mm. And so mm. I, I told him I wasn't in a hurry. So we sat there at the mosque. We sat outside, and we talked mm. for mm. About, to about 4 in the morning. Wow. And so... Uh, mm. Then I took him back to his hotel, and, he's, and he said, can you pick me up and take me to the mosque before we go on campus? I said, okay. So I picked him up, took him to the mosque around 6 in the morning. I went back home, ate breakfast, and took a nap. He was still praying right. wow. when I got there. Intense. And so we, we, uh, I brought him there. And so, and so anyway, up until he died, whenever he would come to D.C., he would always go to the mosque. He would call me up. And I just walk up the street wow. and go up there and hang out with him, like, you know, the whole time, you know. And we would talk on the phone a lot. So anyway, when he was doing his concert with us, he had all these flutes that he had made, you know, because he lived in Nigeria mm -hmm. uh, for a while. And, he, and I think he moved there because he wanted to learn how to make African flutes. Right. And they sounded really good. And so I'm always begging, you know. <laughs> right, right. So I said, uh, uh, I say, uh, I'd love to have you make me a flute, Dr. T. He said, okay, I'll do okay. what I can do. So I, I, you know, I just right. don't, you know. Right. So about a couple of years later, yeah, a couple of years, I forgot about it. A couple of years later, I go to the, my mailbox and open up this package. And it was two flutes he had made for me. <laughs> and I looked at it. And so anyway, I got Oh, wow. Boy. And what he did, it was a, uh, it's a female... I didn't take the, you know, I, I, this is his writing. He wrote, he dedicated yeah, to me sure. and he dedicated the other one to my wife, Deborah. Wow, yeah. But anyway, this, this cracked because of the, uh, well, you well, so I got to get this fixed. But this one here is like, uh, he, he made awesome. these two, it's a Boy. female and a male flute wow. he made for me. Wow, that's right. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's real. I, I, I met him at a uh, IAJE conference, you know, he had his own booth and stuff like that, talked to him, I bought some records and stuff like that. And then a couple of weeks later, I get more CDs, you know, addressed to Row 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Call me my brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. You know, it was such a thrill. Said, Yosef yeah. Latif sending me his recordings. You know, yeah. wow, yes. 2008, but, he sent this. Gosh, that's, but that's so special. Having yeah, no, I am. Uh, I keep them. Boy, I mean, uh, Sais has played them. Sais wow. knows how to play it, you know, but he... Uh, wow, that's But he really said every special. flute is different that he yeah. makes, you know, so... Uh, Boy. Yeah, so uh, anyway, I got had this. Wow. And uh, Jeez, no, my son told me he wanted, he wanted to keep these because he... He, uh, Yusef used to do this uh, camp in, at the uh, University of Massachusetts Amherst with Willie Hill and Frederick Tillis. And one year I sent my son up there and uh, Yusef, ref uh, they became real good friends too. So he just said that's, wow. they, they, they're for me and my wife, but they're his, he gonna keep these, you know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so, right, oh, good, good to see you, so, you know, I, yeah. I got, I got, I got, I have a lot of, like, little stories I've, I've had with uh, people over the years, I've, I've shared it with, because uh, I'm always, I'm always asking people for stuff, like, I'm, I asked Donald Bird to give me this horn, right, he gave me that, <laughs> good, I asked Yusef to give me, make me a flute, he did that, and, um, uh, let see what else I got. Oh. We had this very famous opera singer uh, at Howard University. Her name was Matawilda Dobbs. In fact, her poster is at the African American Museum. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. her, her nephew was Maynard Jackson, who was the very Fair first African American mayor, mayor of Atlanta. Atlanta. Right, I, think right. I, think, I think the airport is named after him, isn't it? Jackson. Yeah, 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 it's named after him. So anyway, I used to do a lot of uh, recitals with her. She just like she she wanted me to play piccolo trumpet with her, doing a lot of baroque pieces. I love that music, and we did a big concert with Bobby McFerrin, uh, mm -hmm. William McFerrin, his daddy, not mm -hmm. not the not the son. So anyway, uh, so we were, we would rehearse at a house over in Virginia. So I walked in the house, and I saw this picture of Louis Armstrong, this the portrait of Louis Armstrong. And so I asked her, I said, where'd you get that? So she sat down and told me the story. Uh, she was singing all over the world, you know, and her husband was Swedish. She was a Swedish oh, writer. Okay. And her husband knew Louis Armstrong personally. Wow. So when she was in uh, London singing at the Palladium, uh, Covenant Gardens, uh, Louis Armstrong was at the Palladium. Mm. So she told her husband, it's 1958, say, I'm gonna meet Louis Armstrong. He said, take me to meet Louis. It's okay. So he bought a ticket. He said, can you take me backstage where I can meet him? He said, yeah. So they told the doorman, say, tell Louis Bink is here to meet him. His name was Bink. That was his last name. So he said, hey, tell Bink, come on back. So they went back into his dressing room. And when they went in his dressing room, there was a British artist that was sketching him. Mm. Sketch, he had a, he had, you know, back in the day, the, the musicians yeah. were that process. Yeah. He, had a, he had a stocking cap on. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, so he was sketching him, you know, and Madam Willis sat there and looked at it. She said, oh, Lewis, that looks really good. He said, you like it? He said, yeah. He said, you want it? He said, yeah. He said, can you sign it? Sure. So he wrote on that wow. to, to Madam Willis and Bink, mm -hmm. keep on keeping on kid. Mm -hmm. And he spelled kid. K E E D, <laughs> and he signed a satchmo, oh, and he wow. drew a trumpet on it. Right, right. wow. So anyway, wow. what happened? That this is it. Oh my! And, and his signature is worth about three thousand dollars, isn't it? Oh wow. gosh, well, this is incredible. Right. Wow, there it is. Boy, that's yes. that's that's just this. What, this is priceless. What, what a so in, so anyway, when she wow. So anyway, I I would always when I would sit on campus. I always I say, Madam Will, I love that picture you have. <laughs> so, so anyway, she said, oh, yeah. So she said, I really love it, too. So when she, <laughs> so when she, when she wow. retired from Howard, she came down to my office, said, Mr. Professor, Irby, uh, I'm, I'm leaving next week. I'm retiring. I said, I want to give you something. Oh. And she said, oh, Lord. I said, oh, Lord. I said, well, can you write something on it? So she wrote this on the back, like, uh, the Palladium, London, 1958, to Fred Irby. I knew you'd appreciate having this. Sincere, Madam Willard. She retired in 1999. Wow. So she wrote this on the back oh, of it. Oh, man. So this is uh, a picture to, to Madam oh, Wilder and Bink. 
Carry On Kid. Right. Satchmo. Satchmo. With <laughs> Louis Armstrong. Wow, how special is that? Thank yeah. you for bringing that. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, Ooh. Yes. so uh, I'm, I'm not giving these away. I'm just. No. I'm, <laughs> Absolutely yeah. not. So, so anyway. Um, wow. I got a bunch of stuff in my office. I got a picture of, of Lewis, uh, of Duke Ellington. And uh, when, I, when I would go out to L.A. and play, this trumpet player I would play with is named George Graham. Uh, really good trumpet player. He, his father was a trumpet player too, and he also, he played in a big band in, in uh, Chicago, and his section mate was uh, Rafael Mendez, the real famous uh, Mexican trumpet player. So uh, one day, uh, they, they called him Pappy. So one day Pappy was playing in his club in the 50s, not at the hotel, and Pappy's band was a relief band. And uh, whenever Duke, uh, whenever they would go on break, Pappy would always go into Duke's uh, dressing room and talk to him. So the last week they were there, Pappy asked Duke, could he get a picture, a photo, and can he sign it? And Duke said, yeah. He said, can you have everybody in your band sign it? He said, yeah. <laughs> so they, they signed it. So I have on this picture, this is a copy, it's not the original, but it looks real though. You've oh, seen yeah, that. Yeah, right, right. Okay, right. It's, it's, not, it's, a, it's a copy, it, look, it looks so real, you think it's, wow. everybody thinks it's real, it's, not, it's a copy. But on that picture, I have uh, Ben Webster, mm. uh, Johnny Hodges, mm. Sonny Greer, Lionel Hampton, mm. uh, Freddie, Freddie Webster, that's his name, a mm -hmm. trumpet player. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. But it's, everybody was in that band. Wow. They signed it. It's about 15 of them. So I have it on the wall and everything in my mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, most of the students come in there, they don't, they don't even know who it is. Oh. Yeah. And uh, there have been several people. Uh, McCoy Tyner played with Howie. He came up and came to my office, and he went right to it. Right. <laughs> of course. He, he went, he went of right course. to it. Wow. And several people have gone right. Jimmy Owens went right to it, too. Sure. He sure. saw those, you know. Sure. Uh, uh, speaking of, 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 of recognition, you, you established the Benny Golson Award. It was originally, the first one was, was the Benny, and then it's been named after him. What was the, the, the impetus for, for, for establishing the award in the beginning? Okay, um, Benny had just gotten the uh, NEA Jazz Master right, Award. Okay. So uh, I had I had been talking to Donald Bird on the phone. You know, he, he, he used to call me like every two weeks. And wow. He called me like at 12 o'clock at midnight, and we talked like three in the morning. I told him he got to stop doing that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, when Benny got the award, he said, Fred, y'all need to do something about Benny. Benny is, uh, went to Howard, and, yeah. and he got this award. I mean, got the NEA said, and Howard's not even recognizing him. I said, well, what should we do? He, he said, well, you figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, man, I don't, okay. you know, I don't know what to do. Uh, so anyway, I, I said, okay. So I went over to uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, president's office and talked to the, uh, the uh, secretary of the board of trustees. So I told her that this man went to Howard and he, he uh, is well known. He always tell people in his resume that he went to Howard University. I said, he's written these standards like, I remember Clifford, uh, Long came Betty, Killer Joe, Stable Mates, Whisper Knot, and it was like she didn't know she didn't, no, she, she no. didn't know none of that, you know. Right. So she, I say, I say, she say, said, Mr. Urban, he said nobody know who he is. <laughs> she was saying, I, I never heard of him. Oh, I say, well, uh, wow. I said, okay, I mean, I, I, she could have lied, you know, but okay. she you know, she said you all need to advocate. Um, mm -hmm. you, you you need to be more. Uh, up front about this man, let people know who he is. So I called him up and I uh, asked him would he come and be a guest soloist with my band, hmm. bring him to campus. He hadn't been on campus in 40 years. Yeah. Cause he left school because he couldn't play jazz, you know. So um, he told me he would. And um, he say, uh, y'all have a budget for this? I say, uh, I said, man, I said, I can give you $500. Well, 
So he said, just keep it. <laughs> he said, I'll come anyway. Oh, wow. So he has a brother. Uh, his wife has a brother that still lives here, Malcolm. Uh -huh. So he stayed with him. Wow. So I, I didn't have to pay anything. He came and played with the band. He was happy. That, so I just said, like, I said, I got to do something for him. So I said, we're going to establish this award in your right. name. So he didn't think no more about it. So I gave him an award, and we got this plaque made. And I wanted to make sure that I got copies of it. So I want to make sure everybody that got the award, the plaque looked just like his, mm -hmm. you know. And so wow. uh, these recipients here, uh, Judy, and Dr. Duggan, and right. David. Yeah. So it, all the, everybody's plaque looked the same. Uh -huh. you know? So he came back and played, and uh, and it was jam packed. Couldn't get, couldn't, you know, everybody. Uh -huh. It was free. It's a free concert. So next year we had uh, Frank West, yeah. and Frank West attended uh, Howard Preparatory yeah, School. Absolutely right. Yeah, you know, when he was young, yeah. and then I think. Frank Foster was third, mm -hmm. and Frank Foster had played with us back in 82 when Count Basie died. Mm -hmm. He came back and recorded with us. We wanted to mm -hmm. do something. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. And then after that, it's been like, you know, uh, who's who. It's Absolutely. about 70 people. Absolutely. It's just yeah. remarkable. Yeah, and everybody, everybody played with us except one person, and that was uh, Billy, uh, Billy Taylor because he had a heart operation the week before. Oh, so his right. brother came and accepted the award right, for right, him. Right. But everybody's been present. And Billy's played with us several times. When John Malachi died, we did a concert. Right, right, and Billy right. came and played with us. But right. uh, we, we've done that. And uh, we, uh, we started in 90, the first, was 90, the first one was 96. So every year I would go to the president. I said, look, y'all need to get this man this award. And so he started he, uh, this movie. Did anybody see the movie The Terminal? Now The Terminal, that movie is about him. <laughs> right, right. He he only showed up at the very end. But what happened is that in this movie, I'm sure you all have seen this uh, portrait of uh, Great Day in Harlem, with yeah. all these musicians. Oh yeah. There. Well, anyway, this uh, Tom Hanks played the. He was the lead in it. But anyway, Tom Hanks' father had collected everybody's signature on that portrait except Benny Gosens. So he was headed to the United States to find Benny Gosens when they had a coup in his country. <laughs> <laughs> so he couldn't enter the, the, the country. So he was stuck in the airport. That's right. why, they, so people were coming and going. That's why they call it a terminal. Oh, right, right. So he was stuck in the airport. So at the very end, he uh, when, when they, they finally settled everything, he was able to get out, so he got, he got out and he found Benny Gosen. So <laughs> Benny Gosen was in the movie at the very right, end. Right, you know? right. So right. anyway, right. every year I kept saying, I said, look, John, I said, this man was in Steven Spielberg's movie. He got the, he said, NEA Jazz Master, we need to do something for him, you know? And she said, well, like, let's, let's see what's going on, you know? And so, and they never would do it, you know? So like one year, uh, they called me up and say, you have Benny Gosen's phone? I said, yeah, I got it. <laughs> so I think somebody had canceled, it was like 2013. And then I gave her the phone number. They called Benny up, and Benny could not be present to accept it because he ex accepted an engagement in South Korea. Mm -hmm. And he was a man of integrity once he gave his word. Sure. And he called, he said, Fred, I'm just so sorry. Mm -hmm. I can't do this. I said, oh, hold on. Okay. I said, well, I tried, you know. So the next year they called him again, and he accepted us mm -hmm. when he came and got it. Okay, right. So this is what happened. He started getting correspondence from Howard about what you're supposed to do to graduation, you know, the, the, the regular protocol. And he called me and he said, Fred, he said, thank you for get, um, having him give me this, this honorary doctor. He said, but you know, all the correspondence I've been getting from Howard, they're spelling my name wrong. <laughs> I said, what you mean? So his name is... His name is Benny, Benny, B-E-N-N-Y. -N -N That's his name. Yeah, right. So right. They, had, they were spelling it like B-E-N-N-I-E. -E. Uh, that's how Benny Maupin spells his name. Right, okay. But right. That's, I think B-E-N-N-I-E -E is a feminine uh, word, but they, yeah. they can be used Either both ways. Way. So anyway, I called him. He said, Fred, I think they're going to mess me up. I said, no, Benny. Mm -hmm. so, I, so about a week before, I called the secretary. I said, look, get this man, I don't know who's, who's doing this, but this man's name is not spelled right. And they called it. Right. So they got the, the, uh, they got, they got the, uh, the diploma mm -hmm. with the correct spelling. Right. But what they do every year, 
<laughs> like I said, I'm always begging. Right. <laughs> wow. Uh, so what they do every year, when they give you the honorary doctor, they give you this medallion. Right, okay. So, uh. but they have to order these medallions like six weeks before because they make them up. And then they write the inscription on the back. And what happens that before they could correct this, they had ordered this medallion, oh, and they spelled his name wrong on here. Oh, God, there it is. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, they got God. the Howard University presented to Benny Ghost and Doctor of Music. Oh, May, God. May, May, uh, oh, Trump. so they spelled it, so, so it's, anyway, he had it on during graduation, but nobody could see it. Right, and He right, said, Fred, right. I knew, so he kept, he had told me a couple of times, oh. even when I told him it was straight, he said, Fred, I got a feeling they're going to mess me up. Right. Right. <laughs> he said, Fred, I got a feeling. I said, Benny, cool out, man, they, 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 everything's cool. And so anyway, he, that night at, at the commencement, uh, at the commencement dinner the night before, wow. at the Four Seasons, he said, Fred, they misspelled my name. <laughs> I said, what? So anyway, I told her, she, and she told me that they ordered these things like wow. uh, six weeks ahead. So, oh, they, God. so, so anyway, they, he said, Fred, what they're going to do, they told me that they're going to correct that mm -hmm. and send Give me one my name's name spelled right. right. <laughs> so I, I said, okay, Benny, I said, when you get the new one, I said, can you give me that one? <laughs> <laughs> so he gave me he this. That's went fantastic. Yeah. Betty Golson right. with the IE. <laughs> right, right. But let me just say this. He told me when he was born, wow. his name was B-E-N-N-I-E. -N -N -E, uh -huh. And what happens is he changed it. Okay. He changed it to B-E-N-N-Y because Benny Goodman, uh, right, all, right. You know, everybody's name is B. All men Why? are B-E-N-N-Y. Well, he, okay. he, he said he, he changed it. Wow. But he, originally his birth name was B-E-N-I-E. -E. I-E was right, right. Right in the beginning. <laughs> right. So he gave me this. So wow. I, I, got this I got this wow. on the wall at home. treasure. Yeah. Wow. And uh, oh, Lord. we got one more story to uh, Jeez, boy. It's for you, Judy. Uh, wow. We, we, uh, we, we, uh, uh, when, when, Ms., when uh, Ms. White, uh, Evelyn White was uh, there, her Dr. McGinty, they always had this thing called Meet the Composer. And they would invite these real famous African American classical composers uh -huh. in. So the first year it was George Walker. And the second year was uh, Ulysses K. And third year was uh, Hale Smith. And the third year was Ollie Wilson. Now, Ollie Wilson was Tony Williams' composition teacher at, at Berkeley in California. Mm. So, he, okay. I mean, these cats are like brilliant, you know. So anyway, after the, the second year, like 19, I think 80, 81, Ulysses K. was there. So we, he had written these pieces, a piece for brass quartet. And so I, me and a couple of my students, we played the piece on the program. Uh, whenever he had these composers, we always played that piece mm -hmm, and they would mm -hmm. explain. So I, we played this piece and so, and at the end of the program, he came up and he said, he said Professor, everybody, I really like your plan. I really did my piece justice. I said, oh, thank you. I said, you have any other trumpet pieces? He said, no, I don't know. He said, I should. I said, what, what? He said, my uncle played trumpet. I said, your uncle? Who is that? King Oliver. Oh. <laughs> Almost passed out. Wow. <laughs> Jeez, wow. King Oliver was his uncle. That was his wow. mother's brother. Wow. So I said, I said, mm -hmm. oh no. I said, I, I said, can you write me some? I say, uh, I said, I don't have that much money, you know. <laughs> he said, he said, well, uh, so I eat, we agreed upon a price, uh -huh. and so I sent him the money right away before he can change his mind, and so he, and he wanted me to explain what kind of piece I wanted, uh -huh. so he, I did that. So I waited for a year. He hadn't, uh, he, I didn't get the music. So about a year and a half after I had paid him, I called him up and I say, uh, how you doing? I say, you remember me? <laughs> <laughs> so he said, yeah. He said, he said I, know, I, know, I know I owe you a piece. I said, have you started? He said, I haven't had time to start on it yet. Oh, I wow. said, man, yeah. I said, you know what? I'm glad to hear that because I need my money back. <laughs> <laughs> so so he, said, uh, he said, I didn't spend it. <laughs> <laughs> so the phone got quiet uh, on both ends, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. So wow. I, so it was like around January. So he said, I tell you what, uh, I'm going to have your piece to you 
in June. So I tell you what, I say, don't give it to me in June. Give it to me in July on my birthday. He said, when is your birthday? I said, July 20th. And so I, you know, I didn't think he was, you know, you know, he, yeah. people, they did say one thing. He might yeah. get, he was busy writing an opera. He did an opera on Frederick Douglass. He was busy writing that. So sure enough, uh, on my birthday, I, I, I forgot all about that. So my birthday that summer, I went out to my mailbox to check my mail. I saw this package in there from him. And with this piece here, Trumba, it's called Trumba, a suite for wow. Trumba and the piano. Wow. So anyway, I, I got it, and I couldn't wait. I tore the package up, like to try to get, try to get the music, and and I took it and and I took it up to school the next day and played it with Dr. Jackson and look at it and all that. And so anyway, I had it, and so I was gonna, I was gonna play it on a recital, but I I had to cancel the recital because we got this trip uh, to go, and it was in '83 to go to South America with wow. John Malachi. Okay. So I had to, I had to do that. And so, wow. so next year I said, well, I got to get this program. So anyway, I think in October sometime, Bernice Reagan uh, was Sweet Hunter in the Rock. Rock. Yeah. But she had this uh, program in which she used to always uh, present music by African-American composers. Mm -hmm. And Miss White, uh, Mr. Flagg, uh, uh, Nelda, Nelda song one year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we did, so, and she called me and said, Professor, I heard you had this piece by Ulysses K. Do you want to play it on the program? I said, yeah. I said, this will be a permit. She said, will? I said, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I didn't know at the time. They invited him up. Wow. And so I, I, I played the piece on the program. I was scared as hell, too. I mean, he, he is like King Oliver's nephew right, sitting there. Right, <laughs> it's right, a piece right. that he had written. He's a very accomplished composer. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there, and I worked on it really hard, too. Anyway, I, I did. Mm -hmm. I got a pretty good write-up in the Washington Post. But anyway, I've got a copy for the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Felix Grant uh, archives. Wow. Yes. But awesome. anyway. Uh, Jeez. Wait a minute. Boy. Mm -mm -mm. I, I had some. Oh, here it is. But anyway. Uh, the correspondence that we did, we didn't have computers back then. Uh, the correspondence that we did, uh, I have the, the letter that he wrote to me. And also, uh, he wrote some program notes. So if anybody wants to play it, they can have the program notes. And here's a, a copy of the Washington Post, a review of the concert and everything. Awesome. So anyway, this wow. is for the archives. Awesome. Wow, that's fantastic. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see what else I got. That's it. <laughs> That's uh, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Dr. McGinty. Who is she? Tell us a little bit about her. Okay. Uh, she, um, she was chairman of the music department at Howard. Uh, she, she was, uh, you ever see Derek McGinty? Yeah. That's his mother. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Derek McGinty's mother. She wow. was the very first um, American woman to get a doctorate from Oxford. Okay, wow. She was brilliant. Mm, mm, mm. But anyway, from, from 1977 until like 92, she did the line of notes I for all of our- I the albums, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. I remember the name. Yeah, she did Absolutely. the line of notes for all of our CDs and everything. Wow, wow. Very, very scholarly, mm -hmm. real smart, mm -hmm. everything. So she was like one of my mentors too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Was, was it, when you first started, was there any any dynamic between sort of the old school classical music department and, and issues with the jazz program coming in because of the the, the history of, of the program at Howard, where you couldn't even play jazz in the band room when when say Andrew White was 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 right. a student? Oh, it was a lot. I mean, they they, they were from uh, you know, it was a lot of people that just didn't understand jazz. Mm -hmm. They just, they didn't hear jazz, they saw it. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. they saw music and they, you know, you know, when I, when I listen to a piece of music, uh, uh, first thing I'm, I'm just thinking about, who wrote this? You know, I can hear Monk and, sure. you know, different people. Sure, wow. Yeah. And, and I can, if I can hear a group play, I say that's a trumpet and an alto. Mm -hmm. I can say that's, that's in B flat, <laughs> that's in F, you know. 
Mm. He's out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that a lot, you know. Right, right. So right, they, right. they don't they don't hear music that way. Right, right, right. And so what they, I think what they uh, a lot of them, and I run across a lot, not now but back in the day, a lot of parents didn't want their kids playing this music because they associated this music with drugs, alcohol, and bad things, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. negative things. Sure, so, sure. Uh, yeah. And and, yeah. and and at the same time, you know, the white schools were embracing this. Right. Okay. And some churches were embracing it too, because Duke was writing these masses. masses right, right. But the how was, yeah. yeah. But they, they 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 like I said, they didn't want they didn't want John Malachi to, to come and teach. They felt oh, that yeah. they felt that these piano players could could study with with with, with a classical teacher and learn Chopin and mm. Bach and, and, and that that was and they could take it from there. Which, when they look at it, they say, well, you know, it worked for Roberta Flack. <laughs> it worked for Harold Wheeler. Oh, boy. It worked for, you know, it worked for Andrew White. Boy, <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> I mean, I thought, I know, you know, I know. well, I know. but see, what happens that um, if something works and it's successful, with it, there's no reason for them not to believe that. Right. Now, right. it's the same thing happening in sports. Yeah. Like those schools in the South, like Alabama and Texas, back in the fifties and sixties, they said, "Well, why you don't have no athletes?" They said, "Well, we're winning. We don't need them." Mm -hmm. So we're winning. Mm -hmm. So they start losing. That's where they got them. Right, right, <laughs> they right. start losing. Right, right. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's the only reason they're playing. Right. Boy. If they were still winning, they would still have them. Right. Right. No. They start losing, and the money got to be. A thing too, because you you win a national championship, you're, you're gonna bring ten million dollars into your school, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, and you you seeing all these schools like Notre Dame and Southern Cal, they say, well, we don't want you to have no black players. We're gonna come get them mm -hmm. ourselves, you know. Uh, so when they start winning. Mm -hmm. If if they were winning, they would not have no black players, mm -hmm. because they say we got the best. We're winning. Mm -hmm. It's only when you start losing. So what happens that these people at Howard, they they have been turning out all these successful commercial jazz players and they didn't teach that at Howard. They said it you know, we're successful doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that that a lot of the old school they Oh absolutely they figure that you you know you you can um Well you know my my wife was a student at Howard when they had the, the, the student struggles and strikes in the sixties and, mm -hmm. and a real a real push to to bring things like jazz and other African studies right. to, to the university, and uh, uh, it, it was remarkable that, that it switched to have one of the finest jazz programs in, in the yeah. country since then. Uh, the vocal group, Afro Blue and Kanat Vermilla, how did that how did that work out? Well, we had uh, we had a group uh, back in the uh, '90s. It was pretty good too. It's called uh, Ebony Sound System. Mm. It's on mm -hmm. a couple of our CDs. Okay. And they they uh, they were they were very good. The fellow named Webster Lewis, and, and Webster was a piano player. And well, Webster was like the music director for Barry White when he had all those hits. He was his okay. uh, music director, and also he's a great jingle writer. You've seen that uh, jingle with uh, with Ella Fitzgerald. Is it Memorex or is it live? Right. Right. Well, he did right. that. Okay. He yeah. also did a Coke cup of for Coca Cola, uh -huh. so he had a he had a pretty good group, but I I don't think that he uh, he was not the academic person that, that knew how to teach this music like mm -hmm. uh, like like Kanetra. So what happened that he uh, and I think he 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 decided he wanted to leave anyway, so he left. So we interviewed several people. Dr. Dawkins and I, we interviewed several people. We just said, oh, "Man, this this ain't gonna work," you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So we didn't hire anybody the first year, mm -hmm. and then the next year, uh, we, we we didn't have nobody. And so Dr. Dawkins said, said "Fred, you're gonna have to go out and find somebody because I'm getting ready to retire <laughs> pretty soon." <laughs> so I talked to some people uh, uh, with the IEJ, uh -huh. and they told me about uh, this lady who was like a she was a piano major as an undergraduate, and she was a jazz voice piano uh, major for her graduate work at, uh, at 
uh, Northern Colorado. That's where she went. Uh huh. And but she, her undergraduate was at uh, was at uh, Kansas State. And at the time, the, the the Kansas State was where IAJE was based. Right. You know, right. in Manhattan. Manhattan, Kansas. Right. That's so anyway, I knew the fellow who uh, that worked there, and he told me about her. He said because he was a band uh, one one of his fellows, he was a band director. And she was his she was his graduate assistant. And he was just telling me how great she was. So. You know, most singers you read, they can't read. You know, yeah. I mean, they can they can sing. They got right. the best voice in the world. You know, but they they don't have the the, the technical skills that instrumentalists have. You know, but they have something we don't have. They have the voice, voice. Right. which okay. is the best instrument at all. Mm -hmm. They can make you cry. You know, mm -hmm. and he told me about her, and he kept telling me about her. He kept saying, he said, man, this this, this lady, uh, this this lady. I said, man, you know. I was looking for a man, you know. He said, man, this, you got to get this lady here. <laughs> I, I was, because we had a man there already, you know. Right, I, well, so I said, no. Nah. I said, man, because, you know, first thing you think that the, the women can't handle men, you know. So so what happened uh -oh. is that um, I said, okay, let me let me try. I said, give me a phone number. So he gave me a phone number. I said, what's this? He said, she's in Australia. <laughs> oh, wow. I said, what? what? So anyway, uh, I found out the time difference down there, so I, so I said, I'm going to have to call this lady like around, what, 11 o'clock at night. So I called his phone number, and somebody answered the phone, and it wasn't her number. She didn't have a phone down there. Oh, wow. So she knew these people that had the phone, so whenever anybody wanted to reach her, right. they would just call this number, you know. Right, wow. So I called this number, I talked to these people, and I asked them, I say, uh, I'm calling for Kenetra Miller. They said, well, she doesn't live here. He said, well, we can get the message to you. You want to speak, you need to speak to her? I said, yeah, I'd like to talk to her. I said, when, I, when can I call back? He said, well, I think it was like a Monday. He said, call back uh, Wednesday at 2 in the morning. <laughs> I think it'll be like what, 2 in the afternoon, something like that. Oh, okay, the time right, is upside down. Right, right. So I called her back, and she was there. She answered wow. the phone. We talked. Jeez. and. I asked her, was she interested in coming to Howard? She said, well, I, I, uh, she said, I don't know. What kind of program do you have? I said, we're looking for somebody to do our jazz vocal program. So we talked, and then she, said, she told me that she was tired of living in Australia. Right, she wanted okay. to come back to the States. Okay. So we weren't able to get her. And so she went to another college in California. She stayed there for a year. But I kept talking to her on the phone because it was something about her voice. Uh-huh. You know, okay. singers, singers have that diction wow. mm -hmm. you know and then she started talking and we was talking on the phone and i said you were piano major in college i said yes yeah. say what are you she said what do you play mr Irby? i said i play trumpet oh yeah say mm -hmm. I, I i played the hindemith trumpet sonata <laughs> when I, I said what well, okay wow. <laughs> now yeah, first wow. of all you don't even look at that no let's long play yeah. it right that's a real hard in fact it's a it's a piano sonata with trumpet that's wow. what it is you know I said, oh, yeah, you said, yeah, I played it, you know. I said, okay. I said, all right, you, you know, live by my trumpet. So anyway, she came in for an audition, and I think Charles Covington played with her. Uh -huh. So she walked over on the stage. Uh, she called a tuner, and he's, he said, what key? She said, F. You know, she knew her keys and all that. Mm -hmm. And so, okay. uh, and then she sat down to play the piece. Too. Okay, wow. I said, boy, I said, she's, she's a really good musician, you know. Wow. And, uh, but she never played with no band or nothing like that. She went in the, she went in the streets, uh -huh. you know. Okay, right, right, right. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. she she played, and wow. so I sat down and talked to her, and so so we hired her, and so I didn't think no more about it. I said, "You got it now." You, you got know, it. So. Okay. <laughs> so one day, Doc, Doc, she did. They did a program somewhere. I hadn't heard the group at all. Mm -mm -mm. Doctor Dawkins ran by my heart and said, "Fred, you gotta go hear that group." Whoa. I said, "You said Fred." They sound so good. So you know, first of all, I I, I thought he had been drinking. <laughs> so so I didn't I didn't think I didn't think no more about it. You know, I just, I, I said okay. And then I heard him sing. I said, I said damn, boy. I said that's amazing. You know, and they were doing everything from memory. I mean, it was like like it was like you you it's like you it's, this room is dark. Mm. And you turn the switch on. You got that. Wow. It, it didn't wow. exist. <laughs> it's all boom. Wow. And so anyway. I, so the first thing I say, I say, you know, wow. this group is so good that people need to hear them. So I told her that uh, I wanted her group to play, to sing on all the jazz ensemble concerts on campus from right. now on. Okay. 
Wow. Now, so that's, that's and I also told her that I wanted her to record, and I was going to pay for it. Right. So okay. I, uh, that record came out in uh, 2006. Uh huh. But she's on my 2002, right. 2003, 4, 2005 CDs. Right. I'll jazz on something. Right. And then. And then I think she did like, I think she did two tunes on each one of those uh -huh. on our CD. Right. Then she took those eight tunes and she put those eight Seven. tunes on her CD and right. she added four more. Right. So we kind of like gave them a push and, wow. and after that, man, it's been history, you know. And boy, it's just phenomenal. Afro yeah, and, blue. And, the, and the group is like boy. really good too. The one thing I, I'm, you know, I, I, uh, I, 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 I think we got some, there's some pretty good singers. Uh, I think that we had better voices that weren't organized back in the uh, back in the seventies when I first got there. We had some voices that was like really good, but mm. we didn't have no program, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the one thing that people don't realize is that the reason that group is so good is because she writes all the music. Uh huh. Okay. And she knows the the, the voice. voice. The voice is and, how to and, utilize and it. And she told me that I was talking with her. And I just say like you know you, you I said you had some right great ch charge and she said well you know I I write like Duke you know <laughs> I, I I have I write part for, for David, David right, I write right, part for, for you right okay you know rather than write the arrangement right he, okay I hear these people's voices wow. uh huh and I write that way boy that's phenomenal you know it really is you have some other great uh, faculty people right now uh, a, a pianist for example oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, we had Charles Covington teaching, yeah, and so uh, I, uh, I, I, I was given the task to go out and find a piano teacher, and so I knew uh, one of my four, former students, Eric Wheeler, mm -hmm. was playing with Cyrus, so I called Eric up and I asked him uh, about Cyrus, and he said, "Miss Irby, it's just as he's advertised." <laughs> you know, I say, I say, you think he might be interested in coming to Howard? He said, "Yeah," so he gave me his phone number. I called him. And we didn't interview anybody else. We brought him Charles in. Charles Chestnut, man, oh, just yeah. incredible. Yeah. Right, 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 right. You know, I had an interview uh, with, with uh, Rufus Reed and Buster Williams, and we were talking about how, the, how do they balance their academic responsibilities and being a working musician, doing tours and stuff like that. Mm. And, and they just said something that surprised me. They said that their because of their prominent names when they were hired, they were part of their contract was that they continue to be visible out, out there. Is there a similar situation with Cyrus? How, how do you balance his busy schedule with his teaching responsibilities? Well, um, when we hired him, and I told the faculty too, I say, uh, I told the chairman, I say, we, we hired Cyrus Chestnut, and I don't want him to stop being Cyrus Chestnut. Right, right. You know? okay. right. <laughs> That's why we hired him, because of who he is. <laughs> so he, he's a, uh, and with now with the technology, you know, you got FaceTime, you got Skype, and mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can contact your teacher, they can contact you. If they have to change the schedules and so like that. But he's been very, uh, he's a very religious person too. Mm -hmm, I know. So he knows that he has to teach these kids. So he's not going to abuse that. You know? Right, right. So right, he's right. been he's been great, you know. Right, right. Who are some of the other faculty members? We got Charlie really Young. Uh huh. I yes. had to. I had to talk him. It took me two years to get him in Howard. Wow. He didn't want to. He didn't want to teach. Wow. Because he knew the responsibility of mm -hmm. being a teacher, mm -hmm. and so he, I, I was on him like just, I, you know, we had a classical saxophone teacher, and, and he left, and, uh, and I just said we need someone who can balance both. Charles is a great, great classical player, wow. okay, so he, sure. he, he, he agreed to come teach at Howard. So we got yeah. him, and uh, we got Jerry Conkle. Uh huh. You know Jerry Conkle? Yeah, I know Jerry very yeah. well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, some some good folks. Uh, speaking of uh, jazz and classical, you've had to put some balance on your life. You've been working at the Kennedy Center for, for some time now. Yeah. Right. And uh, the Oscars that you played at mm -hmm. for a while, how, how has that worked out in terms of... Uh, well, I mean, you know, um, well, two things. Um, I like to play, but two things I don't like. I don't like to travel. Okay. I. I I like to be home, sleep, uh -huh. <laughs> and I, I don't like to be up late at night. Like when I'm not working, I'm sleep like oh. eight thirty, nine o'clock. Okay. Yeah. I just I fall asleep. You know, I just 
Yeah. Yeah. I, and, and when you when you play, I had, I had one student in my band that was playing with Chuck Brown. He come back. I said, "What time y'all start at?" Oh, we start at one o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I, I can't I can I couldn't do that. I, well, I, I mean, playing every night and and well, doing all that, you'll be dead. You know, especially if you, I think well, the, the, in the travel you got to do. You know, uh -huh. uh, I think uh, well. I just saw where uh, uh, Kenny Garrett Corcoran played with Kenny Garrett. Yeah, I just saw sure, on Facebook Corcoran where played. they. They just right. left Poland, right? And they left, they left, they flew from Poland to Portland, Oregon, right? And, and got off the plane and did a gig and wow. stuff like that. Yeah, I, I just you're not not for you. No, 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 no. Yeah, and, 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 and if you're gonna be a if you're gonna be a name, yeah, for you're gonna have to travel, you know. And uh, I, I, uh, what, Dave Samuels, the violin yeah. player. Yeah. Well, he he had a nephew that that played. Uh, we did a musical at the Kennedy Center. Uh, uh, crazy for you, but his nephew played drums, and so I used to go out between shows with him a lot. And he he told me that his his Dave just died recently. His, wow. Yeah, he just said that his he's called him uncle. He said Uncle Dave hate this bit. And he said why? He said because if you don't travel, you don't work. Right, right. So you always got to be out there doing something, you know, and stuff. And so I, you know, and I, I hate traveling, and I've never been like good at. Calling people up, mm -hmm. you know, you got in a club to, to, to try to get your band to play. I mean, I, I don't think I've called anybody like in 40 years. Now, how often does the uh, Kennedy Center have have you uh, working in, in in the in the pit down, down at the uh, opera house? I do maybe. Uh, I do maybe. 26 to 30 weeks a year. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, and then I do some in Baltimore. Okay, and then I I play at the other theater. I play uh, uh, uh Ford Theater, uh huh, National Theater, Arena Stage. Uh, wow, not all the time, but you know, no, yeah, I'm, I'm no. one of the cats that they call they're you. Calling. Okay, right? okay, okay. But I have a uh, I have membership in the Kennington Orchestra. Okay, so awesome. I I do you know, uh, I, in fact this summer I did My Fair Lady wow. and Hello Dolly. Okay, My Fair Lady was like. Uh, no, that was Christmas. Wow. I did Aladdin. Wow. Aladdin was eight weeks, and right after that was Hello Doll. So it was 13 weeks in a row. Wow. So, so right now I'm doing uh, Wicked in Baltimore. So you you're busy without the travel. Yeah, <laughs> you know? no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any plans for retirement? Well, yeah, I tell people this. Uh, uh, yeah. As long as as long as I'm having fun. So I don't, I don't, I'm I'm not up late at night. When right. I get home, I go right to bed. Okay. So, you know, so I'm I'm not tired. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, I tell people, they say, how long are you going to work? I say, well, I guess my phone stopped ringing. Right, okay. Right, <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think we have time for some questions if uh, folks want to ask uh, Fred Irby some questions about his career or anything. None? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, you had, I know you were thinking about something, right, right, absolutely. You were talking about Mike, Mike Beard. Oh, yeah. He was a music director for the Super Bowl when Lady Gaga did it uh, two years ago. Oh, wow. Jeez. Yeah. Wow, no. No, so I guess who, who, in terms of activities, who are some of the students that, that, that you look at that, that you're most proud of, 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 you know, like somebody playing with Lady Gaga or something like that? Who are some of the others that, you know, came through a program, you say, you say wow, we're, 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 doing it. We're, we're doing it here? You know, it's every instrument that, every sax, there have been like a lot of saxophone players uh -huh. that come through that, like really good. Yeah. We've had some great bass players. We had some great piano players. Uh, one of Alan Stewart, Sam, yeah. uh, Amy Bormet, right? Uh, okay. Michael yeah. Bearden, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Got great drummers. So, uh, Cal the Shields, like he's he's doing a great job down in East Carolina. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I I think the. 
I, 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 I don't think too much of what the kids don't because they're supposed to do. They go, they go to, they're gonna get better. Right. They, right. Even if they don't go to college, they gonna get. If they keep practicing, they are gonna get better. Mm -hmm, and they mm -hmm. they become very productive people. But I, I think that one thing that I'm, I'm most proud of is that uh, I've been able to uh, establish a scholarship. Okay. I have an endowed scholarship. It's not named. It's not named the Fritter. It's named Abraham Venable. This man was the uh, uh, vice president for General Motors, uh -huh. and he used to always come to, come to our concerts and tell me how much he loved jazz. Wow. Okay. But he would give all his money to the school of business <laughs> because he was he was a business man. Sure, he was sure. he was in school with Benny Gosen. Right. And, right. Uh, okay. Wow. Fascinating. Okay. And uh, Bill Hughes and and wow. Charlie Ross. He knew all of them. Sure. Okay. He's from DC. Yeah. So anyway, I we had been drinking one night, so I talked to him into giving the jazz ensemble. He was gonna give the school of business some money. Yeah. I talked to him to giving the jazz ensemble a uh, wow. uh, hundred thousand dollars. Wow. So we established a scholarship in his name for students. Fantastic. Right. That's, that's, wow. And the other thing is that uh, the, the trips that, I, you know, uh, we've gone to Japan four times, mm -hmm. and uh, we were the very first band to, uh, to perform in China. China, right, right. And yeah. uh, we was in uh, Senegal mm -hmm. like four years ago. Okay. Went there. And uh, where else? South America. We, we've done, we've done uh, uh, all over the Caribbean. Uh -huh. St. Thomas, St. Croix, uh, Martinique, mm -hmm. Venezuela, mm -hmm. you know, so. And then, so the program's really solid with that. Any budget crises or anything like that that you're able to? We don't have no through? budget crisis okay. because yeah. we don't have no money. Oh. <laughs> 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 they don't, I have, I have to generate, I have to, Oh, I had to generate. Boy. I had to generate all my money to do wow. everything. Boy, all, all of our trips, uh, the school didn't pay for none of that. Wow, that, but that's that's really impressive that you've been able to do that. Yeah, that's so all our records, we we raised the money, money. so okay. there's no budget problem. Okay. <laughs> wow. I see everybody crying about that. I was like, what's, uh, what's the problem? You know? Boy, no, you've done it. Yeah. You know, it, it's been been an incredible life. A really sense of it. Yeah. You, you come up with what you're gonna add. Huh? Wow. Uh, the topic would probably be, I had the best seat in the house. Uh-huh. Yeah, what a great title. <laughs> Boy, that, that really is. That really is, you know. We, uh, and, and it's, you know, it's just remarkable in terms of the, the program that you came into and really establishing something to keep it going from the 70s to yeah. 2020. You know, that's, that's uh, Well, Donald, really Donald, remarkable. Donald, uh, Donald, like, uh, I think we probably wouldn't have had this if it hadn't been for Donald. Oh, of course not. But, yeah, but, but he, you know, he, he got, he's like, the, you know, the, 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 the lightning that sparked it going. But to keep it as a solid program, it, yeah. it took someone like you to keep it. Well, there, you know, I, I, don't, just, I don't think it's, I, first yeah. of all, we had, Howard's always had good students. Yeah. Before me and yeah. before Donald. Sure. I mean, Ben Agosa went there, Absolutely. Andrew. They've always had talent. Charles I, Tolliver, who I just saw last weekend. Was, yeah. was a pharmacy student there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so they, they, they've, they've always know. had, uh, they've always yeah. had uh, yeah. talent and, yeah. and good people going there. Uh, we had a yeah. girl a couple of years, Savannah Harris. Uh -huh. You know Savannah? Yeah. Yeah, she, she yeah. was a communications major. Wow. Someone even you know, she's a good, very good player. Wow. But I, I think what has happened is that we we've had a we've had a really good faculty. Okay. Uh, yeah. And I think that uh, all the all the people on our faculty, uh, first of all, all of them better than me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I I tell them that all the time. I say, man, you you better. I tell mm -hmm. Doctor, I was just laughing at him. I say, man, you know, you you much better than me. You know. Wow. I say people. Think I'm running? I ain't doing nothing, you know. Oh, I'm just, I'm just, and I, Charlie Young, yeah, he's old a, he's older. I said, I said, man, you, I said, man, you so much better than me, <laughs> you know. Boy, and uh, I tell uh, Kanetra that all the time. I said, I said, you, I said, you so much better than me, you know. Mm -mm -mm. Well. And, and, and Charlie, I, I would always tell Charlie, I said, I said, Charlie, man, you, you so much better than me, man. He said, No, I'm not, Fred. I said, Why? He said, because I don't want your band. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got it. You got I it. Said, wow. I said, I want to, you got it. Wow. But, you know, all of us, we've, uh, boy, we, we've, uh, we, we got our little thing we do, and we, we 
all of us, uh, like Dr. Dawkins for years, was a music contractor for Arena Stage. Right. And so we got a life away from Howard. Sure, of course. You know, some people don't have a life. They go right. home and watch Oprah. Right, You know, right. no. you know no. so we, we, we uh, in fact, uh, I've I worked for him for over 20 years at Arena Stage. Wow. He chose that. So uh, we would, in fact, the whole time we would be playing shows, I mean, I've worked for 20 years. We never talked about Howard. Uh -huh. We sit wow. next to each other. Boy. <laughs> wow. We never talked about Howard. Mm -hmm. We would go there, we talked about family. Okay. But yeah. we, never, we never spoke about what goes on. I mean, right. we'd be at, they'd be at school and we'd be arguing with other faculty. Right. We'd, we'd leave there, we'd just go and play music, you know? Right. And, and, uh, and, and, and he told me this, but this is true. I, I saw it every night. Like, if we had a show that starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, I mean, 8 o'clock at night, I try to get there like 7 15, uh -huh. 7 30. He's there like a quarter to seven wow. every night. And so I said, Bam, man, I, I said, How you do this, man? He said, I gotta get here. I said, Why? He said, I got all these horns. Uh -huh. He's okay. playing clarinet, flute, saxophone, uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, yeah. alto tenor, you know, piccolo. He said, I gotta make sure they work. He said, he said, you just got a piece of plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> you just put a ball piece on and blow. Oh, wow, Lord. Yeah, he said that, uh, making sure it's reeds. Wow. Well, you got to be moist and everything. He said, I'm doing all that. I just, I take my horn and put it on. I said, let's go. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. so when you, when you have something like that to, uh, we have other words other than Howard, you know. Yeah, and so, sure, sure. Uh, you, you don't have time to be jealous of nobody. No, okay. You now, uh, speaking of Howard and Howard University Jazz Ensemble, you have an event coming up here at the end of April. Right. Part of something you've been a part of. For yeah, we got, we got, we got, we got, uh, <laughs> we got, uh, I think, four, five activities. Uh, let me start from, we're going in May, uh -huh. we're going to Montana State University, wow. Bozeman, Montana. We're going to be out there for wow. two days. And then we play the Calvin Jones. Uh, big band festival. That's the 29th, uh, mm. 27th. Okay, and then the 22nd, we record our 2020 CD. Okay, wow. And then on the 10th, we are at uh, Westminster Church. Mm -hmm. And on the 9th, that's when we do our spring um, our spring concert. Okay. We had last month. We had Jimmy Green. Right, Jimmy Green was fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Well. Was really and so nice. we having um, our spring concert on um, uh, April 9th. And where will that be? Uh, it's gonna be in the band room again. Again, that's it, pretty tight. Yeah, we, we <laughs> the, 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 uh, you know the the chapel uh, uh -huh. uh, the, it's been condemned. Oh really? Yeah, they had a big oh. they had a big power so a big flood two or oh, three years ago. Wow. So we can't do anything in the chapel. And wow. the Blackburn Center has been closed for uh, renovation. Oh, okay. So we usually get stuff over there. So we have to we have to do it either in the band room or Ira Aldrich. Okay. And we can't do it in Ira Aldrich because the theater department has something going on. Oh, okay. And uh, it's going to be a great concert, Who's going to be your guest? Alan Johnson. Alan Johnson. Okay. Fantastic. He don't Alan. know it yet, though. Oh. <laughs> 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 April 9th. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. We got oh. something, something, goes, <laughs> something goes with it. <laughs> wow. That, Jesus. Boy. Fantastic. Well, this is great. 1240. I'll be in touch with you. Wow. This is, <laughs> see, I'm glad to be the witness of this connection. <laughs> yeah, he don't know it yet, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that's awesome. That really is. Mm -hmm. I will be there. Absolutely. Any final words you want to say to the folks who came out tonight? No, uh, I want to introduce my wife, uh, Deborah, oh. well, uh, and you. and that's her sister. Wow. And wow. that's uh, behind her is Fred Urban the Fourth. Wow. Awesome. And his. Uh, wow. Christina. Wow. Yeah, it's. it's his friend. Wow, fantastic.
Well, and, that's, uh, yeah, and I'll, also, uh, I, I, I went to a funeral today uh, in Baltimore. Uh, mm. uh, Ed Walters, mm. his mother passed away. Oh, okay. You know Ed Walters? He yeah. used to be the contractor now. His mother was 99 years oh, old. Oh, wow. But yeah. anyway, my, mother, uh, my mother-in-law uh, is uh, 96 years old. Wow. And she lives in uh, Rockville. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, we got yeah, a pretty good, good family. family. Longevity and a good family. Yeah, good yeah. family ties. Right. And, and uh, home at night. You're home at night. Yeah, I got to be, man. I got to, you know. <laughs> I, you know, I, uh, I, the, yeah. the show I'm playing, Wicked. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, it's about, have, have y'all, anybody seen it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it's been, it's, this is my fourth time doing it. I've done it three times okay. at the Kennedy Center. Wow. But it's been running on Broadway over 20 years. Wow. And it's about the Wicked Witch of the West. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> it's about the witches. It's like the Wizard of Oz. Right, right. But it's about the, wick, the witches, you know. Uh-huh. And so uh, well, it's, it's one of them like, who's, who's like, uh, well, you need to see it. Okay. You, you, if, you, if you go online, you can read the synopsis of it. Uh-huh. I don't want to give you it. But if you see it, and the music is like really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I tell all the students now, you know, you, uh, if you really want to make some money in music, uh, you got to start writing. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. Because the way these, uh, the business people have taken over, uh-huh. like with Spotify yeah. and yeah, yeah. Pandora, these people are not yeah. even musicians. Right, They've right. taken so, all that over, mm-hmm. and when you write, you can control your, your, mm-hmm. your, your royalties and all that stuff mm-hmm. like that. So. Especially mm-hmm. like with this, uh, this this show, um, uh, Stephen Stephen Swartz wrote the music, uh, mm-hmm. and he's making the composer. He's making uh, twenty five thousand dollars a week. Now they they bring oh, it in boy. like two million. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but the, okay. but the, produ- the, the people who put the money up, they they're getting all the money. money right, right. You know, right, so he's right. making twenty five thousand dollars a week off this show, mm-hmm. and. He has six productions around the world. Mm-hmm. He has one on, New- on Broadway. He got one traveling, one I'm doing. He got one in London. Mm-hmm. He got one in Australia. And I think another one in Paris. So he got five shows in which he's making uh, $25,000 a week. So that's $125,000 a week. So wow. that, I, I mean, when you look at the month, he's making like uh, uh, half a million dollars a month. Wow. So at the end of the year, he's got like twelve, uh, six million dollars. Now that's just for that show. Now if he's written, a, he wrote, he also wrote Pippin too. <laughs> yeah. So on um, Broadway it's like, you know, I mean, you, I mean, you write a show and, and you just let it go. You know, it just, it just runs and runs and runs and runs. You sitting at home, ka-ching, ka-ching, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, Boy. Andrew Lloyd Webber, Boy. he wrote like, you know, Jesus Christ Superstar, The Phantom of the Opera, uh, Evita. All these great shows, and 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 they still running like they're doing them in the dinner theaters and colleges are doing them, and, and I think Phantom of the Opera's been running for like thirty years on Broadway, mm. and they got one on the road too, but they said that if he gets up in the morning and eat breakfast, go back to bed, get up and eat lunch. Go back to bed, get up and eat dinner, and go back to bed. If he does that for a whole year, don't do nothing now, just that. He makes two hundred million dollars a year. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's still money to be made in music. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> do, oh yeah. You do right. Broadway is like I mean right, it's, right. it's it's like I mean it's 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 right. ridiculous the money money right, these people right, are making. Right. Uh, aside from that. What's your view and your perspective on, on, on this music that we all love? We may not like the, 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 the title of it, but we've learned to live with it. What, what do you, what's your, 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 your feeling about the future of jazz? I think it's in really good hands. Okay. I mean, this, I mean the player's not so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, technology is, uh, the teachers are better. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're able to learn quicker. Uh, they can write quicker. That's one thing that I dislike about writing when I was in college because I didn't have no computers. Mm-hmm. Now and I had to copy all the parts and all uh-huh. that. And, and not only not only with computers, the computer can print your part out, but you can play it back on a computer and hear what it sounds like. 
right. you can make changes. So um, technology has been like just, I mean, we, I mean, we've, we've, we've like, we've gone like from, from when I started playing music. In fact, we, when I was in college, we had like a little band, uh, we had a little big band. We only rehearsed in the spring because we had marching band, but now bands are rehearsing year round, you know. So we were going like maybe 25 miles an hour. These programs, now they're going like 80, 85, mm, 90. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Everything. Uh, when I, I, I was talking to a student, uh, I just had a student today to give a, a hearing for his recital, and he had ordered his music. Uh, we, about, a, about a month ago, we, we was in my office and he had to order his music. So we ordered online. And he got his, he ordered it off of Amazon, and he got the music like the next day. In fact, some of it was PDFs. He got it the same day. Wow. Now, when I was in college, that means he had his music within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, uh, I decided what I was going to play, and then I had to write a letter. So a lot of these publishing companies they wouldn't answer no phone because uh -huh. they would they'd be answering the phone all yeah. day, you know, and they didn't want to pay nobody to do that. They didn't have secretary. Yeah. So I had to write a letter to, to Robert King uh, uh, and ask him, did they have these pieces in stock? Yeah. And then they got the letter, and did, did you have these pieces, how much would they cost? So it took three or four days for the letter to get there. The mail was slower then. Wow. You know, uh, and then they would write me back. So that process from me writing them and getting it back was like about eight, nine days. Wow. Okay, so he said, we have these pieces, this is how much it cost. So I sent the money to them. It took three or four days. And then they sent me another letter back. We forgot to add the shipping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So I had to send them well, another check. Well, And then <laughs> I finally got the pieces. So that whole process wow. took three weeks and a half. Wow. Whereas you can get stuff now with less than 24 hours. Wow. So everything is fast. Right, right. Yeah, you print it out. Right, right. And, and, and not only that, but I, want, I, had, I had to get a money order, See? and they take personal checks. Uh, and then now you can pay online with your credit yeah, card. Right, absolutely. No, it's all, it's a new dynamic. Everything, yeah. Everything's going faster, so yeah. we, we didn't have that, you know, and yeah, stuff, you know. no, no. Well, you ain't playing at the Kennedy Center tonight, and I noticed it's an hour past your bedtime. So I, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know, yeah. I really, really want to thank you for your delightful conversation tonight. Yeah, it was yeah, really yeah. good stuff. It, it, it's, it's been really one, one of the best interviews I've had here. I yeah. Really, really. Well, you know, I, I, uh, I, I, I've yeah. always admired this school. You know, I used to teach at Federal City uh -huh, College. Ah, okay, uh, right, uh, right. In fact, Jeez. Bobby Felder got me. My, my first year here, Bob wow. Feller got me to teach trumpet wow, for two okay. years. Wow! So, uh, and I had some. We've had some good kids uh, throughout the program, and uh, and I think that the Calvin Jones uh, Jazz Festival is like one of the great things that this university does in this town. Absolutely. And uh, this university has always been special to me. Uh, uh, I used to always listen to the radio station in the morning. Oh, yeah. And that, that broke my, I mean, it tore something it's from, away from me. All of us, yeah, absolutely. From, from yeah. the jazz community. Yeah. Uh, it, it did something really, Yeah. I mean, that was, that was one of the worst things I've seen to happen here. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. just, uh, just snatched it, no, snatched no. the station from us because it unified everybody. Everybody, I used to, wear, yeah. I used to, wear, I used to leave my radio uh, station on all night and listen yeah. to the music. And that was a good way for kids to be educated. Right, absolutely. No, you know? it's, it's, a, it's a real tragedy. But, but the legacy, of course, is here with the Felix Grant Jazz Archive and the yeah. material that we have yeah. to, to preserve uh, you know, a, a, and really keep the legacy alive. Yeah, I think the yeah. legacy is, is, is going to always be here. And, and, yeah. uh, I, you know, I got a, uh, you know, Felix Grant went with us to China. Right. In, right. in fact, wow. I got a picture of, of me at the Great Wall. Oh, wow. That Felix took Felix that picture. Felix took the picture, okay. Yeah, Jeez, Felix took fantastic. the picture. And, and uh, wow. when I first came to town, came to town uh, Felix, he was at WML. Yeah. And every time we had a record that would come out, Felix would, would invite me to, come to in his and show, and he'd talk about it the whole time. Wow. You know? That's great. And yeah. he tried to get me to go to, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get away, but he wanted me to go down to Brazil. Uh. Several, he, I mean, we sure. almost had it worked out one time, but some came up, I couldn't go and everything. But he was very close sure. with the people of Brazil, you know. Absolutely. No, really, really. But he sure. was a good man. But, uh, but Judy, uh, I, I have to commend you. Uh, 
that's why we, we, uh, we gave you the, yeah, we gave you the Benny Goldson Award. You've been doing some, that, that, that. How, long, how many years have we done the festival? This will be the 34th. 34th year. Wow. Yeah. I've been here every one of them, you know. Absolutely. No. So, uh, we're going to, we're going to give, uh, Maestro, the, uh, the Benny Goldson Award this year. Fantastic. Which he deserves. Congratulations. <laughs> Well deserved. Yeah, Thank you yeah. for yeah recognition. Wow. We would have, you know, if Calvin had, if Calvin, I, that was one of the things we was gonna do right before Calvin passed away. We we're gonna give it to him. We gave, we give it to like Bobby, uh -huh. uh, Buck Hill, yeah, uh, Larry Willis got it. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like I wow. said, McCoy, and uh, in fact, wow. we presented to McCoy at the Kennedy Center. We played the Jerry right, Allen got right, it. Yeah. Uh, Wallace, Roney. Wallace Roney. Yeah, I remember Jerry and Wallace were together at, at the Rankin Chapel. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. fact, that was, a, yeah. that was a, a, a tribute to Dr. Dawkins. Right. We gave it to him. Right. And, you know, Benny Gosen, he got the first award, and uh, he played at it. But the only other time, this, this award been given out, like, uh, uh, twice a year, and it's named for him. And the only other time he's been here to play and be a part of it is when we had a tribute to Dr. Dawkins. Wow. He thought so much of him that he said, I'm going to come back and back play on this play. program. Wow. So it was Dr. Dawkins, uh, Jerry yeah, Allen, George. and Wallace Ronan. Wow. They came yes, back to play for him. Special event. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, go to our website, uh, dot <laughs> org, and you'll see, the, you'll see all the names on it. Wow. Right. Fantastic. Wow. Thanks a lot. Oh, no problem, Boy, man. Boy, this is awesome. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Woo.